If you clicked on this video, you are in your last ditch effort to export something from Premiere Pro or Premiere Pro is lagging and you just want to get past that little hump of Premiere Pro freezing on either export or while you're just playing footage back. My name is Javier Mercedes. If you are into video tech tutorials, hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications. I'm going to open up Premiere Pro and show you an example of a project that this is funny because Premiere Pro isn't even open. It's not going to open up for me. Oh my gosh, it's gonna, I'm going to have to force quit. So I was actually going to show you an example of a project that kept freezing on me and I had to restart my computer and my sample project that was freezing just did it for me right now. So just know I'm, I'm being real with you right now. Re there it is. Sorry. Sorry. There was a serious error. Well, I'm sorry. Not really Premiere Pro. Why don't you work sometimes? This is kind of a more intermediate to export tutorial. If you are a beginner in Premiere Pro, there might be some techniques or something in here that I will kind of breeze by and hopefully my understanding is that you already know these things in Premiere Pro. If not, maybe leave me a comment down below and I can answer you with those questions. So for this example, I'm using an Instagram cut, a trailer that I made for an episode of my podcast recently, Passion and Progress. And this is an interview I did with Cody Warner. I'll link it somewhere here. We talk about being a creator on YouTube and what it takes to just make it on this platform. And I just really enjoy everything that Cody's doing. A really awesome guy. But that's not what you're here for. I just had to get a little plug for the podcast. Without fail, this project always freezes on the beginning of the export. That tells me that there's probably something in the beginning of the export graphics wise or something wonky with audio or something like that that is tripping up Premiere Pro on export. But I'll just show you right here. I'll hit play. Like there's compounding interest in like a savings account. Yeah. There's compounding interest on effort in anybody's life. Mm -hmm. As you can see, playback is happening in Premiere Pro, but it is freezing on the beginning of the export. In order to combat that, I've done things like empty my media cache, uh, only export like a ProRes of just the visual part and then export my audio. And like, there's a plethora of other things that you can do to circumvent exports and make sure that they export fine. This is just another technique that you can put in your tool bag because it could be a little time intensive. I know at the very beginning, it's not exporting. So I'm going to do this technique for about the first four seconds of my file. And then I'm going to see if that alleviates my issue. If this camera right here isn't in your little uh, menu system, go to this plus sign and grab it and bring it on like that, click and drag and hit OK. I am going to hover over and it looks like if I hold Shift E on my Mac keyboard, that will export this frame. And I'm going to export each frame individually and then pair them in Premiere Pro later as a time lapse. And that will circumvent all the processing that is going on for Premiere Pro. I know that this works 99% of the time. Here's how that looks. I'm going to hit Shift E, then you get the export frame thing to pop up. Click browse. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it time lapse one place folder. Sure. Hit OK. Now I'm going to choose this folder. The format, if you are really concerned about the quality of every single frame matching the quality of what you see in Premiere, then do PNG. I myself am not as concerned with using PNGs because one, it's going to go up on Instagram and two, I'm kind of OK with JPEG and how it looks within Premiere Pro. I'm not at this point, I'm not going to be doing any more color correcting or any other thing like that. If you needed to do more processing to these files, don't do this technique because you're basically burning the visuals into the cut. Like once you're done with this, it's going to be like you're creating a placeholder. Plus, JPEGs take up less room. So if you want to razz me in the comments for using JPEGs instead of PNGs, go ahead. But I'm going to be OK with not having to buy as much hard drives, as many hard drives. Sorry, maybe I'm not as good at English, kind of OK at video editing. Now that I've hit that first one, I'm going to go to my keyboard. I'm going to hit over shift E. Enter over shift E. Enter. And I'm just going to show you what's happening here on the back end. And what you're creating is these files right here. So I'm going to go back over, over, shift E, enter, over, shift E, enter, over, 
and shift E enter. And by shift E, every single time I say shift E, that's really just export frame, export frame, export frame, export frame. There's compounding interest on exporting frames. I'm just gonna speed this up really quick so you don't have to watch me do this. In this example, I actually went to 602 because I didn't realize that I'm using another Photoshop file and maybe Premiere Pro might be getting tripped up right there with the graphics that are going on right here. I went to 602 and that's important because when we load these files in, we want the video file to match up exactly to that six second and two frame mark. Here is all of the files we exported. At this point, we're going to have to reformat the names of all of these files. Otherwise, Premiere Pro will not be able to recognize all of these pictures as one video file. So the next part I know how to do in Mac. I'm not sure how to do this in Windows. I'm sure there's some easy way to rename footage in Windows, but I'm not privy to it. So hopefully there's some way to do that. Here you highlight the very first file, scroll all the way down, hold shift and click the very last file. Then I'm going to right click, go to rename, these and I'm going to go to format, name and counter, and then I'll just type this in again because it's Cody Warner, Cody Warner, and then I'll do like a little underscore. And now after the name, make sure after name is there. Now it's going to add a counter and this is imperative because we want them to become a sequence and make sure they step through the frames uh, that we exported in order. So right here is 00001. Hit rename and look at that. Ooh wee. That looks a little bit more manageable, doesn't it? Inside the project bin inside Premiere Pro, we're going to go to import. Click this very first one, and this is in that same uh, folder that we were just in. Gonna make sure image sequence is checked off. An image sequence here is going to stack all of these files into order to create a 23.976 or 29.976 video file. Make sure that you only have the very first image in the sequence selected. And that tells Premiere Pro where to start in the image sequence. Hit import and voila. Now we have that video file here inside Premiere Pro. And it may say 001, but that it just takes the file name of the very first file. Now I'll show you something that may look wrong at the beginning. I exported frames all the way up to six seconds in two frames. And when I drag this onto the timeline, this is only going up to four seconds in 21 frames. So what gives? I'll tell you what gives. The problem is that when we created this image sequence, it treated it as a frame rate of 29.976. My sequence is at 23.976. So in order to fix this, I have to go to modify, interpret footage, and instead of use frame rate from file, which is this, we want to assume 23.976. Boom. Now I'm going to click and drag this on. Oh, and look at that. That goes right to where I need it to. I can now go over here unenable all of these files underneath like there's compounding interest in like a savings account yeah there's compounding interest on effort and with this technique we've effectively made a placeholder the the last resort thing that you can do is make a little mini just export those couple frames during that spot that's giving you trouble if the computer is showing you those frames in the cut export them make it into a time lapse, drop that time lapse into Premiere Pro. And just like I'll show you right here, I'll hit Command M and I'll hit export. And look at that. Before it was going to it was saying it was going to take like three days to export. So I have no idea what was going on with Premiere. It seems like recently with a lot of the upgrades like Premiere, I've spent more time trying to export my files than actually working on projects in general. But this is one technique to circumvent any rough patch that you have in Premiere. And it works for me most of the time. It may not work for some people. And trust me, there are so many different ways to circumvent how to uh, approach a cut when it's not working inside Premiere. I hope this was helpful for you. Leave me a, some comments down below if you're having trouble with this. I will try my hardest to help you with that, but it's a little hard to do it over the comment section on YouTube. So maybe on my Patreon, I might set up like uh, consulting things, uh, helping people with Premiere Pro editing. 
if that's something that you guys would be interested in, leave me a comment down below as well. Till next time, live a life of abundance. I sincerely hope that this tutorial helped you and wasn't too confusing. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, notification bell, all the deedly dods with the doodly doos.